Welcome back. You're still watching Beautiful Day. This is Weather HQ. Now, in the past few days, large parts of Metro Manila have been swamped by heavy rains brought by the southwest monsoon, causing floods, stranding commuters, and slowing down the city. To help us understand why this keeps on happening, we are joined via Zoom by Project NOAA Executive Director Dr. Mahai Mahar Lagmai. He is here to explain the science behind Metro Manila's flooding problem, how urban development may be making things worse, and what can be done before the next storm hits. Good morning, Dr. Lagmai. It's a beautiful day. Hello, good morning. Good morning. Doc, let's start off first with Project NOAA. Para sa mga unfamiliar po sa Project NOAA, what does this platform do and how does that actually help Philippines prepare for natural disasters, especially flooding? Yeah, we have that uh, website called Project NOAA. Well, it used to be called Project NOAA, but it's now part of the uh, UP NOAA Center, which is the core component of the UP Resilience Institute. That website is uh, can be found at noaa.up.edu.ph and the first page you would see uh, it says there know your hazards so the idea there is before a, a severe weather event happens people are already aware if their area is flood prone or not the idea of showing these maps uh, is actually about getting the people to find the safest place to go to in case pag-asa or government like NDRMC, OCD announces that there's imminent danger. Mm -hmm. But the first step really is to find out whether uh, that area uh, that you, you live in or the school where your, your boy or daughter goes to or the office of your husband uh, is, is a dangerous area or not. That awareness is very important. And the awareness also of the place where it is safer or the safest in, the, in that community is also important because you would like to know where to go in case there's danger. Mm -hmm. that's, that's the idea behind know your neighborhood. There are other features there such as landslide hazard maps as yep. well as storm surge hazard maps. Uh, hazards that are related to hydrometeorological hazards or in simple terms severe weather. Mm -hmm. Well, doc uh, for those wondering, sample ng galing yung data. Is it crowdsourced? Is it something that is an interagency effort in terms of gathering the appropriate data, gathering all of the uh, numbers when it comes to the floods especially? Yeah, the data or most of the data uh, was generated by Project NOAA, which was funded by government uh, at uh, to the tune of about 6.4 billion pesos. That, that was funded by Congress. And there were other projects, uh, I think 21 projects underneath the program, which is uh, called Project NOAA. Uh, one of them was the Microsat, which eventually uh, uh, became the, the Philippine Space Agency. Now, there's a, a project there uh, which involved the the flying of planes that would create the, the detailed topography of the entire Philippines on which we simulated hazard maps to generate high-resolution hazard maps where you can see detail up to the barangay level. Mm -hmm. And we did that for just, not just for floods, for landslides, and also for storm surges. And among other things, sensors were also deployed to give near real-time data. So it's it's really a product of a lot of things that we have worked on, that the Philippines has worked on over the past, I think, 12 years. And it's all displayed there in that website. So please, please visit it because there's a lot of information there. Well, uh, yes, yeah, so we're showing uh, different uh, clips of a while ago from Project NOAA if you visit the website. And of course, when we take a look at the flood maps that we're actually going to show in just a, a bit, once we say Quezon City, for example, you can see there the different types of uh, the different types of hazards there, including, uh, if I'm not mistaken, there's also a legend key to show which spots are more flood prone compared to the others. So we go back to the almost age-old question, dito sa Pilipinas, especially in Metro Manila, Doc. What are the most common causes for flooding, especially in the metro area? Na na observe po ninyo working with NOAA. Okay, there are many causes of flooding or types of flooding, by the way. 
uh, there's there's coastal flooding, there's uh, flooding that occurs near rivers because of heavy rainfall or swelling of the rivers. Uh, and among other things, you know, subsidence causes flooding as well. The, the, the main cause of, of flooding in Metro Manila is because of, of extreme rain. No? Uh, uh, we have to have a lot of rain delivered over a short span of time for the floods to be able to to accumulate or to be generated. Yeah. Now, uh, rain is the most important, and it's it's a natural process. It's been happening ever since. Now, we have done so many things to aggravate the problem. Like, for example, we put concrete or pave the roads. When we pave the roads, there's lack of infiltration. Normally, the the soil absorbs the water. Uh, we have uh, put a lot of garbage in drainage channels. We have cut the trees, a lot of trees in the forests. Therefore, the mountains cannot absorb that much water anymore. And these are aggravating factors mm -hmm. that make floods worse. And now Metro Manila is an urban jungle full of concrete. Of course, the waterways that used to be uh, the, the streams, the creeks, yung mga sapa na tinatawag sa Tagalog, the rivers, uh, uh, don't have that enough capacity compared to before. I'm not saying that they don't have capacity. They, they still have, they can still carry or convey water down to Manila Bay, but uh, it has delayed the flow of water. And when there's delay, just like in traffic, they... they they stay there or they pond, and that is called as a flood. Mm -hmm. When you take, uh, you mentioned that there is still capacity uh, naturally, especially sa mga sapa, mga waterway, uh, to funnel water away from the urban metro and, of course, Manila Bay. But uh, the question also is, is are, are there any interventions that actually have worked or have been effective that we've seen uh, significant changes throughout the time the Project NOAA has been active that has actually contributed positively to our flood water management? Well, the, the effects of Project NOAA has not really been yet on the losses and damages okay. inflicted by floods. The benefit of Project NOAA was more on the reduction of fatalities. So it's not just NOAA, it's a collective effort, but we believe, based on counterfactual evidence, that NOAA contributed a lot. Before, we used to have about 1,000 to 1,250 deaths on average per year. Since 2014, uh, wherein there was a lot of uh, uh, activities and policies that were implemented, it was reduced, that number, from 1,000 above to 250 deaths per year. Mm -hmm. Now, if we look uh, look at the the uh, what do you call this the loss and damages, it has remained the same, more or less 50 billion pesos a year, on average. Yeah, and the, the reason for that is because you can move people, but you cannot move the settlements. <laughs> you cannot move. That is more long term, right? Yeah. Uh, it does not happen overnight. It doesn't even happen over the span of five years. Considering the extent of the problem, it's difficult to do that. Uh, what I can say, though, in Metro Manila is that uh, uh, in Quezon City, the, the local government unit uh, hired Project NOAA or the University of the Philippines to do the drainage master plan. Mm -hmm. And there were, there were simulations that were made for the drainage flow and for the surface flow, they were combined, identifying the places where interventions uh, could be best, uh, including the detention basins, retention basins, the preservation of these big tracts of land like parks and wildlife, uh, areas in UP that could act as temporary holding basins to be released, the water to be released after the rainfall event. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, it takes time, right? For you to be able to uh, create these uh, pools, these, these detention basins, uh, basins underneath uh, basketball courts, yeah. it takes time, the construction. So we just finished that drainage master plan, and uh, hopefully uh, it will reduce, not totally eradicate, 
uh, but reduce. There were other recommendations such as settlements along along floodplains. So it's not just Marikina River and Pasig River and San Juan River that that is the problem or that is the problem because there are so many other creeks and streams as you can see from from that that image and it's like branches of trees going yeah. everywhere, right? All of these creeks and streams of uh, swell as well. They they can be overwhelmed and when they overwhelm they get overwhelmed it spills onto the floodplains. And those flood floodplains are also occupied by settlements, as you can see there. Mm -hmm. You can zoom it some more, please. Uh, you can zoom it some more. And you can see the, the settlements on top of floodplains. Those are the areas that are flooded. Mm -hmm. Now, streets, that, that's the normal condition of the river. You can see the blue line. But when you click on the flood during a, rain, a heavy rainfall event, you see it swells yeah. and it encroaches on settlements. Mm. That, right. that is difficult to, to, to fix, right? Because yes. how would you get all of those people out of those, uh, those, those areas? That's a long-term solution. And that's the same for roads. There, whenever the roads intersect these creeks, the water would like to cross the, the road. But if it's, if it's too swollen... And there's a road there. Naturally, the road would get flooded because it cannot uh, it cannot pass underneath the road when it's swollen. It must pass over the, over road, the road to be to cross the road. Mm -hmm. Doc, um, you mentioned you you started working with the uh, Quezon City LGU when it comes to drainage and of course making your recommendations. Yes, it will take time. But when you take a look at the overall state of drainage, natin, would you say it's outdated? Or how would you describe the current state of drainage here in Metro Manila? Of course, varying is, from different LGU. That is also correct. The drainage uh, size, capacity is, is too low. It's, uh, the, the, the drainage system is not enough. We need to expand it to be able to accommodate the the larger flood events. Remember that with climate change, those rare events that happen only once every 100 years happen now more frequently. Uh, instead of well, once every 100 years, they happen now every once every 10 years or once every five years. Remember, we had floods like Ondoy, which is a one every 180-year event. And then we had Habagat 2012. We had Habagat 2013. We had Habagat 2014. It made Marikina River swell and it flooded Metro Manila. We had Habagat in 2018. We had Ulysses in 2020. We had Habagat because of Karina last year. It made Marikina River swell uh, as well. And all of these events uh, happen more frequently now. And therefore, floods become more frequent as well. The old drainage system, which uh, used to only accommodate smaller events most of the time, uh, they, they are not enough now because we're experiencing more frequent, larger floods. Doc Lagmay, I wish we had more time to discuss this because we can go on and on about yung drainage problems and of course uh, flooding issues dito sa Metro Manila in particular. But that's all the time we have. Thank you so much for joining Thank us and sharing much. your insights with us. Thank you. Thank you.